If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a second edition of a reading vlog where I give authors a last chance. By that I mean that I've read at least one book by these authors and I didn't really care for it, I had issues with them, and I want to give them one last shot before I decide by the end of the week if I am never reading anything else by them or if I'm okay with reading more. Just making it fun. So the first author is Naomi Novik, which I had read Uprooted and actually did not finish it, which it's kind of weird because it's been a couple years and at the time I would barely ever not finish a book, like pretty much ever. But I could not finish that one. It was an adult fantasy. It sounded interesting, but I, I couldn't do it. But I wanted to give her a second shot, which I'm going to be reading A Deadly Education by her because the main premise sounds interesting for me. You're following a character in a magical school setting, which yes, I will always read those books. But I've heard so so reviews, so my expectations are pretty low, and I'm actually going to listen to it as an audiobook just because I want to make sure I can finish it. <laughs> so hoping that I will change my mind about her and that I will fall in love with her writing or something. But yes, giving her a second slash last chance. The second author is the one that I'm the most hopeful I will enjoy the book, and it is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This is actually my fifth book by the author. The book is actually not out yet. It's coming out in July. I have an advanced reader copy, so I will be reading the ebook on my Kindle. But I have reviewed the four books that he has out so far. I will link that down below if you are interested. But the common issue that I had with all four books is that the main female character is badly written, in my opinion. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. And at first, I actually thought the author was a woman too, because Riley. Um, turns out it's a pen name. His name is Scott something, which... I think it's kind of funny how it's flipped. You know how back in the day women had to have pen names or uh, use their initials on the cover because otherwise men would not read their books? Turns out that the main audience for mystery and thrillers is now female audience and <laughs> men are the one starting to do that, which whatever, but the fact that that is done in combination with the main female character being badly written, I just feel cheated for some reason. I don't like it. So I wanted to give him one last shot to change my mind. I'm hoping that I will enjoy it. I think if I had to have a prediction, I think this is going to be the one I like the most between the two books, but we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck. I've created a monster. I've been feeding this specific squirrel every day pretty much because he comes now at the window to tell me he's ready for more food. I think it's going to become a problem, but so far I'm okay. I still have peanuts. At my window, being like, Bish, where's my next peanut? So we're gonna feed him again, but I, it's like the fourth time today. He keeps coming back for more. Oh, I need to clean that. Okay, let me try. There's still a peanut, you dumb dumb. He's right there. Wait, there's still one right there. You just forgot about it. Hi. It's going to end badly because he keeps coming back and like staring at me through the window like, where's my next peanut? And I don't know, it's verging on the bullying at this point. <laughs> He's like so close every time. He's gonna start learning to like knock or something. <laughs> They're kind of scary from up close, I'm just gonna say it. So we are day two and I wanted to update you because I had no idea about the premises of either of those books. So it was kind of hard to do an intro. Now that I'm about 30% in both books, I can give you a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. So the first book was the audiobook, A Deadly Education. All I knew was that there was a school setting, magical school, which frankly, I don't know that much more. <laughs> I'm a little confused though. I really thought this was an adult fantasy and I don't know if it's just me, but I'm getting strong YA vibes, probably because the main female character is uh, a teenager and she's so angsty. Like she's so unlikable, uh, obviously on purpose. She's very, like, um, focused on herself, and she kind of has to. The magical school setting is kind of negative, which, like, everything is out to kill her, basically. Everyone else, uh, there's, like, monsters coming out of everywhere, and I don't know, I'm not loving it so far, but, you know, hoping that things will pick up and get better. I don't know. We'll see. It's still kind of early, I guess. And as far as Survive Tonight by Riley Sager, um, in the beginning, I would say that the first like 10-15%, I was really into it. But now that I've hit the 33%, I'm getting strong vibe of Lock Every Door is other book, where the main female character was so dumb. 
like so dumb. So in this one, you're following this main uh, female character that is in university, but her roommate and best friend got murdered by the campus killer, and they don't know who that is, and uh, you know, kills these young women. She's the third one to die. It's all very tragic, and she's not doing well. She has seen a psychiatrist. She has pills that she's not taking, and she decides to just leave her boyfriend, uh, get a ride from another dude to go back home. And it's in the, was it the 90s? They have no cell phones. So like, sketchy vibes, and uh, you know, can she trust a dude? Is she trustable? Because, because you know, pills. Um, I don't know. So far, I just feel like she is acting really not smartly. <laughs> And I don't know like how much can be excused by the fact that she's been through some trauma because, oh, I didn't say it, but it doesn't really matter. She was with her friend that night and then, you know, told her, told her to F off and, you know, they had a fight before she left her there and that's when she got murdered. So we'll see how it goes. Um, it still has a chance to like come back to being good, but we'll see. We'll see. Good morning. I am making myself a snack. Strawberries were on sale and we know why because they're looking very, very sad. <laughs> what? Anyway, I wanted to update you on both books. Frankly, uh, let's start with the audiobook, Deadly Education. Um, I feel like not a lot is going on. She's just being very angsty, trying to survive, which, you know, that's fine. And um, there's a dude that seems to be into her, like, he's just following her everywhere. The only thing is, I don't really care for the trope of out of nowhere this dude is into her, and he's oh so powerful, but she's also oh so powerful, and I just, I'm confused what the storyline is. We're gonna go there. Uh, as far as the book that we're all the most intrigued about, um, Riley Sager, I'm about 60% into it. It's a really quick read. I feel like a day or two more and I'll be done with it. I am questioning this girl's sanity. I literally cannot say a lot about it without it being a spoiler. I'm gonna keep some spoiler for the end for anyone that will decide not to read the book after my review um, or just doesn't care about it. And I'll let you know, you know, all the details of what is bugging me at the moment. But she is not very smart and not like a like believable way. It's just like a stupid way. <laughs> like I don't like being mean, but like at this point, my rating is like, going down very very fast and um she needs to read the gift of fear because she she every time you think she cannot take make take yeah take a worse decision make your worst every time you think she can't do anything more stupid she does so i'm getting just very angry reading the book i'm almost not interested because like you're doing it to yourself at this point. You know what? I'm gonna include some mild spoiler at the moment So spoiler will be on the screen come back when it's not uh, But it's still pretty mild like you know how some people will say like oh uh, this is like Like paranormal thriller if you consider that being a spoiler you'll consider this being a spoiler So just skip ahead um, She's in the car with that dude. So like obviously you kind of know that Things will happen and at the moment he's kind of playing on the fact that she's a little cuckoo uh, because she apparently sees movies. She's very into movies, I should have mentioned that. And um, I don't like, first off, that she's like a an attractive woman and like she's been compared to Audrey Edburn, but then she doesn't think she's pretty. I don't like that throat. I'm hoping they're not gonna go down that road too much. And uh, the fact that she just zones out and like she sees things embellished in her head, hence the movies. And this dude seems to be like playing with that. Like, is she really imagining things, is she not, and he's dangerous, and I won't say more because that would be a really big spoiler, but, and then they decide to go on a stop, and she's refusing everyone's help, and I'm, I'm, she's frustrating me. Anyway, let me just wash my strawberries. The little strawberries, for anyone curious. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I finally got an actual cute lamp. I had this one which you can't even tell. It's crooked. You can see it sometimes in my videos. I got a pretty one. Anyway, um, basically I'm dealing with two unlikable main characters this week. The first one on the book one 
she's meant to be unlikable, but I understand how it goes almost too far. And she's even annoying me, and I don't mind unlikable characters, so yeah. And then in this other one, Survive the Night, where she's so dumb that it's really hard to root for her. Like, really hard. Anyway, I will update you once I'm almost done, I guess. We need to talk because, um, what, what was this week? Not even a week. I read these pretty fast because I had a lot to think about. Um, actually, let's start with A Deadly Education, Naomi Novik. I was hoping it was going to get better. Essentially, there's barely any plot. There's a lot of world building. I completely understand why people would mention that there's a lot of telling uh, instead of showing, which, agreed. Um... It was boring, and I didn't care about the relationship between the characters. I didn't care about the main female character, and the story is essentially her surviving whatever portion of the video, talking about how things have been, and a little bit of how they are, and then the big fight against monsters. Not a spoiler. Um, no, uh, maximum going to be two stars, I think. There's just nothing I really care about, and the third book, the second book, is coming out soon and not going to happen. Um, no. This this is my review. No. I didn't, like, think it was absolutely horrible, hence the two stars, but I feel like the more time will pass, the more I will dislike and forget it. So, short review, but there's just so little to say about it, honestly. As far as Survive the Night... I finished it last night. I still had like 10% and I'm like, no, I, I need to know how it ends because not like in a good way. <laughs> and this is what I said after I was done. What did I just read? What the ending? What was so bad? What the hell? So like nothing great to say about it. I have so many issues that I literally took notes. I don't ever do that. And a lot of it will be spoilers. So I'll keep that for once I'm done uh, this little portion. I'm giving it one star. I don't do that super often. Like, I know I do, like, worst books that I've read that year kind of thing, and it's always fun, and there seems to be a good amount of books in there, but, like, that's usually less than 10% of the books that I read. So I don't hate that many books. And this one, I also feel like the more time will pass, the more I will resent it. Because the whole time I was really hoping I would change my mind. And, like, I feel like I didn't do that many updates because I just wanted to change my mind actually and start enjoying it and I didn't. I really really didn't. The only thing I can say without spoiling it is that every single cliche you can think of is in there. No explanation that justifies it in my opinion. That's why I wanted to finish it and see like was it all worth it. No it wasn't. It, it just really really wasn't. The main female character sucks. The explanation by the end sucks. I didn't even want to finish it when I hit like 70% because the rest of the things that I have to say will be spoilers. I will go in order that they appear throughout the book so you can stop whenever you feel like it or just skip ahead until my verdict at the end, even though <laughs> we kind of know at this point. So once I hit 33%, I just mentioned to you that she was just dumb, which I stand by that. She, she did not change that at all. So I'm going to go in order of like percentage. That's what I wrote. At 46%, I said that I didn't love the idea that the main female character was just off her meds and crazy. Like, I feel like it's such a bad trope that has been overdone. Trope. I know I put H in there always. Anyway, I just thought it was kind of boring. And at 60%, that's the point where they stop at a diner and then she eats food. She refused the help of the waitress because she sees, you know, the vibes. She refused his help. And by that point, she thinks that she knows that he's the killer. And she decides to go in his car anyway and she's going to deal with it him herself. Like, dude, what? That guy is supposed to be ginormous and you're gonna go and kill him with the steak knife that you found at the diner. Oh, and at 63%, I got super annoyed because the waitress that was saying that the guy was super suspicious, she decides to sit, sit next to him once the police arrive because she called them. And like, for what, five seconds ago, you were saying he was suspicious. Anyway, super weird. Plus she was comparing herself to kidnap victims with Stockholm Syndrome. Like, you've been with the dude for like an hour. Like, please. And then uh, you learn that this woman, the waitress, turns out that she's the grandma of her friend who totally resent her because she didn't remember who the killer was because apparently she kind of saw him in a movie when she was leaving. And she decides to organize this kidnapping to enter, interrogate her. 
And she brings her to a different location in this like cottage place that uh, his friend, her friend used to work at. Uh, and then she shoots the guy and then burn down the place. Like so many dramatic things happening. I hated the fact that her movies would happen like in the most inconvenient time every single time and then would stop for a long time and then reappear at like a specific time. It was just so frustrating, so many cliche. And then the biggest spoiler, well, the biggest spoilers, there are two. Uh, it turns out that the killer was her boyfriend who came to help her because she called him and uh, he's the killer and then like he's gonna go and kill her and then she kills him. And like cliche after cliche after cliche. Like I straight up had to like double check that I was reading the right book because I could not believe that he wrote this book because not that his other ones were like amazing, but they are much better than this one. And then, and then the worst of the twist, uh, the last like five pages, whatever, turns out that the whole thing was a movie that she, you know, it was it's inspired by something that happened to her, but it was made into a movie, hence the cliches. Obviously, they made it, you know, more dramatic for the movie. That does not justify how bad the whole book was. Plus, plus, are you ready for this? She's been uh, not only dating, but married the dude that kidnapped her. Because that's that's what we do, women. We marry our kidnappers. He lied to you, he kidnapped you, you stab him. Um, because she's lonely, she's gonna marry him. And that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated. That That's the quote of the book. I... I have nothing good to say. Like, I swear, I know that people will justify it. Oh, well, it was all a movie and the cliches. No. No. So, um, no more spoilers. I really did not enjoy the ending. Well, most of the book. I was really hoping I was going to love it. I'm pretty sure that's what I said in the beginning, that I thought this was going to be my favorite one of the two. Um, no. At this point, I'm mad. Part of me wants to say... Oh, if he ever writes a book and everyone is giving it five stars, I might check it out. But at this point, realistically, after five books, sure, some of them, well, one of them I overall enjoyed and it was the one with the blue cover. I can't remember the title. Um, that was the best one, in my opinion. There are so many other authors that have written mystery thrillers. Why would I continue focusing on one that I clearly have so many issues with? I feel like I keep reading them because there's a ton of marketing behind him. So like you see his books everywhere. But no, I will continue to just read other stuff. If you have any recommendations for mystery thrillers, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. But yeah, I I think I'm done with Riley Sager. Um, nobody can say I haven't tried because I really did. As far as Naomi Novik, a lot of you told me that Spinning Silver by her was much better and like part of me kind of wants to possibly check it out. I thought it was related to Uprooted because look at both the covers. Do they not look like they're part of the same collection? Um, but if it's a standalone, I don't know, maybe, but it's not as harsh of a no, but it's a probably not. So this is how my week went with these two books, giving authors a last chance. Turns out I will not be reading more probably <laughs> by these authors ever again. I will continue to do that. I'm still hoping that one day I will end up finding an author that, you know what? It was just one bad book. Like he has other stuff or <laughs> nice of me to assume it would be a man. They... Uh, might have something else that I enjoy. So um, yeah, so one one star, one two star, not great, but I'm happy that I have that, you know, off my shoulders. Now I know to probably not pick up anything else by them ever again. Let me in the comment section if you have read uh, Uprooted, uh, not Uprooted, A Deadly Education, and if you were interested in reading uh, Survive Tonight. I'm going to be really curious to read the reviews of people whenever the book comes out in July because I feel like it's probably gonna be very divided, but personally, this is a huge no.